You can see instead they've opted to bring a Legion. I think that's going to be the replacement for Valkyrie, who Legion has seen some major buffs as of late. I believe he gets one more trap and he gets all of his traps about 45 to 40 seconds faster in a round than he did prior. You know, when people initially saw his buff, they were like, oh, that's not a big deal. That's that's just, you know, a couple seconds off of the recharge time for his traps. And no, it was fantastically huge for that operator. And you've seen him played a lot at this Invitational as a result. What is up, my coconut bras, and welcome back. And in this video, we are going to go back to day two before the finals. And we're going to be taking a look at the first game that happened between Penta and Evil Geniuses. And we're going to be kind of looking at and comparing at to what happened in this game versus the finals. They were very different games. And Evil Geniuses did put up a good fight. And there were a bunch of really sneaky stuff that we're going to be looking at. So this video, we got 10 tips for you this first one is going to be some really cool ways that you can play lesion and this is by simply putting lesion on windowsills now when somebody repels up and triggers a lesion you can't actually pull the lesion pin out while you're repelling you're gonna have to either go all the way up or repel all the way down if you stay repelling, you're gonna just continuously take damage. Also, there is notification, so that can leave you very susceptible for the runouts. And another quick tip, while you place lesion traps on side of windowsills, try not to break the glass. If you can just melee it and break just the wood, then you can just straight throw the lesion trap and have a much easier time without it falling over the edge. team are going to drone him out. They'll find him and then they'll start pushing him. This is a really nice repel here from Necrox underutilized. From this position, you can deny the, road to, uh, the run out from the yellow window, the yellow door, as well as the garage. Should you be attacking the top floor, you could kill someone if they impact through the garage. So that is probably the most versatile flank hold position on that repel uh, all in all of outside on that side of the building. All right, now for our tip number two, we're gonna be going outside of the courtyard and outside of the garage area and holding a really good rotation cutoff angle. Now peeking on the yellow stairs to the outside doorway is very common while defending in the garage or pretty much anywhere in consulate if you think that the attackers are coming from this area. When you just simply repel on the outside of this garage way at the bottom of the stairs, you can actually repel up and just hold an angle with only your head peeking out. And if you're playing Blackbeard, this is going to be so devastating. You guys can only imagine if a defender decides to peek this, he's going to be in for a treat. And you guys are going to see right here that repelling up and poking your head in between the little fence is a much better option when holding this angle instead of just being in the bush or on the side. They has moved on to yellow stairs and... They have control now of the lobby and the piano, but unfortunately they're, they don't have a buck. So they're gonna have to use their ash charges and their singular ash charge to get a kill onto Necrox. What a shot from Chate, great positioning there. Great game sense to expect that Necrox rotation from the front of white to the back of white. All right, now the vertical play that Chate was pulling off in this match was absolutely insane. And I absolutely love this spot that he used in order to cut off the rotation. Now, I noticed that when I play console, I feel like I kind of emphasize a lot of my utility over by the piano, and that just breaches the floor above garage, which is also a great spot because you can take out people in front of the white van. But what happened was there was already a hole above that garage, so people weren't necessarily holding the angle in front of white van. So he decided and he made a very good choice to come over here and blow up the floor in this particular spot above the back of white van. And his knowledge was correct. There was somebody rotating out and he was able to take him out. So just playing those kind of mind games of breaking a breach here, making a move, and then figuring out where they're rotating and going and breaking above there and taking him out, absolutely sick plays. Yeah. But all the same, it would be nicer to, I think, for the attackers to have some smokes, you know, have that extra utility to lay down disruption. They haven't needed All right, now I'm not sure if many people saw this one, but from the sky view of the spectator mode, we actually saw that they were placing a mute jammer on top of this little cabinet inside of the security room. Now what this mute jammer does is really sick. This is actually going to disrupt drones that are droning in the main lobby area above the floor by the circle desk. Now this is actually a mute jammer spot that we covered like 
I think it was a video from about nine months ago. And it was just so cool to see this in the background because I didn't think that many people use this or even knew about it still, even though after our video was released, it was kind of a while ago when we were a smaller channel. But it's just so cool to see a mute jammer spot like this. It's still in play and this is a really good one. You guys can kind of see where this goes and you guys can just imagine driving your drones above it, getting disrupted, not even knowing where it's coming from. It's so sick. A double mirror strat from B to A on soft walls Five rather than reinforced way. walls. I'm really interested what the plan is with the shield. Now, Penta doesn't do anything just because. So that shield is very important. There's a reason it exists. I'm guessing it's to force a vault should you want to use the rotation that they've opened on the left side of the mirror window. They, yeah, that's what it is. They don't want an attacker to be able to just drop in the sight drop down and then rush through the rotation in the hallway. They want to make them slow down a little bit. So a bit of a speed bump in that shield. At least that's my guess from the setup there. Either that or it's aligning a perfect angle using the mirror window to hold server or something along those lines. As well, if there's no ADS situated there, though, a grenade or an ash charge will need to be used to take that out, which is yeah. robbing more utility that can be used elsewhere, yeah, essentially no forcing somebody to use their gadget. It's not the rotation thing, because they also made it so you could rotate over the mirror window. And we all right, bros. So now we're going to be taking a look at this pretty detailed double mirror strat. Now, this first mirror we saw in the lockers, the second one in the normal spot by secure hallway, opening up a couple rotations in the bottom left corner and then placing a shield along the side. Now, I'm curious to know what you guys think that this shield could have been for. I think that the commentators pretty much covered it. It's possible that it was just that people couldn't drop down and instantly run in. But like Kick said, they did have a vault option over the mirror, so that may not be the case. It could just simply be a nice rotation for defenders if they start getting pushed from the garage then they could actually rotate into the CCTV room and still be behind a shield. And just looking at it too, just overall, it looks much more intimidating than just a standard regular shield place. And then also another good point that the commentators were able to make was that if they wanted to take this out, it would be another utility wasted such as an ash charge or a grenade, so it could be a bunch of different things all in combination. And you guys can see, you can even see back into CCTV room from the lockers, Mira, and you will be able to stop the plant by throwing devices over the murder holes that we created in the walls. So really cool setup. I'm definitely excited to get into matchmaking and try this one out with the squad. Bonus, and NBK goes down, meaning it's all up to the smoke to try and hang on. He sees the Thermite, gets a shot in, and downs the Thermite. Wow, but Diffuser is down as well. Necrox just needs to wait 20 seconds, but Goga manages to push up, and there's no chance at all the smoke getting pressured, knowing Diffuser is down. And that's a clean shot. Necrox, unfortunately, when he went for the repeek, which, you know, you could say, oh, he just shouldn't have repeeked, he shouldn't have repeeked, he should have repeeked. When he went for the repeek, his holographic sight perfectly covered Goga's position at that time on the ADS. He didn't even see the IQ that killed him. And that is, uh, that's a tough feel right there. And you know, he's got to be kicking himself right now, thinking to himself, oh, I could have won that round had I been able to see my enemy, had I been able to fight my enemy. But that's really, that's the downside of the holographic sight. That's the reason you bring the reflex instead. It's up to you. Do you want the optic or do you want the peripheral vision? All right, so this one has been a big debate over Siege, and it is basically the hollow sight versus the reflex. So we're gonna just quickly do a positive versus negative thing for both of them. You guys can see the downside to hollow sight is it covers up a lot of peripheral vision, the reflex doesn't. But generally, the hollow sight is a little bit easier to aim with if you use the reflex. Be sure to remember that it is the tip of the triangle, not the middle of the triangle that you will need to aim with. Last minute of the round, and uh, BC, a, t a player you don't typically step up, has been getting the necessary frags for his team. And there has been a lot of time wasted by the roamers, but ultimately they're off the board. And the Evil Genius is, a, is ever so good on attack in that last minute. What an angle from Pengu, unexpected entirely on top of the site ta table. I mean, you don't see that ever. And it definitely caught Evil Genius's off guard. BC, again, biting the dust. And that's your top fragger for the round off the board. All right, now taking a look at holding an angle in the CCTV, Pengu is bringing us a very, very nutty spot right here. He's standing on top of the desk 
And this is also a great one. You can practice your quick peeks on. It's gonna go all the way to the bottom of the stairs that is so commonly pushed when defending the CCTV room and the lockers downstairs. When you stand on top of the desk, be sure to watch the sewers entrance because you could be susceptible to the side. So if you have a teammate watching it, that would be absolutely badass. Or if you just simply know it's clear, but you guys can see the bullet holes right there. It goes so far deep inside of the stairs. Most people come looking around this corner at head level height, watching the doorways or behind the servers, not necessarily all the way up. So when you're standing on top of this one, you guys thought he was able to pull off a really, really cheeky kill. Of course, there hasn't been a pro league going on. We've had a long off season leading up to this event, but that's what everyone's saying. It just dominates the meta. And All right, now this is a really great angle to hold. When you're able to break into the break room, you can actually blow up both of these consecutive walls and watch a really nice angle either on the soft wall that leads out to west balcony or also the doorway that leads out to west balcony. Now as a defender it's very common to use the outside rotation on the balcony to rotate in between the armory lockers and also the security room right here. You can actually rotate between the two without being detected so watching this angle is a very very good one get into the break room you can open up these ones every once in a while there will be a mirror on this wall but that's very few and far between so great angle to keep in mind next time you're attacking the armory lockers here who they just simply couldn't see to contest canadian breaking this north window possibly looking to throw out his last cam but unfortunately for him there is somebody outside probably going to find that cam and shoot it Actually, Chate might not have seen it, neither might have Pengu, which is kind of interesting. I guess they may not have been paying attention, which means Canadian's going to have a really great camera. All right, now this next one, we're going to be taking a look at the Evil Geniuses Team Captain Canadian's Valkyrie camera that's going outside of the Armory Locker's window from right here. It's a really great replacement for the default cam, and basically when the default cam guarantee gets taken out, this is going to... This is gonna essentially do the same thing, maybe even a better angle because you can see further left. Actual site itself are able to stop that rising tide when it finally crashes over you in the dying seconds of the round, if it even gets there, I mean. All right, now I literally laughed when I saw this camera. This has to be one of the most clever Valkyrie cameras that I've ever seen on border. I absolutely love this one. Now you guys can see right here that this light is an indestructible light and when you throw your Valkyrie camera on it, it makes it glow white. It essentially looks like just a regular light bulb and this one is so badass. I cannot wait to get into matchmaking and start using this one more. And this basically overlooks the main area that people like to attack and when they open up West Balcony, you can even see all the way over here. So that's going to wrap it up for this game. Let me know what you guys think down below. What was your guys' favorite tip? And who are you guys rooting for? The new Pro League season starts in just a week or two. And we're going to be seeing a bunch of new tips with Lion and Finca, new Blitz. Cannot wait to see how the new meta plays out and bring you a ton of tips. And of course, as always, I'll bring you the final moments of the game where we saw Penta Sports take out Evil Geniuses 2-1. I love you guys all. See you guys all very soon in the next video. Peace. But with that sledge, without having to use a breaching charge, without having to use an exothermic charge, they're just going to push right in, though. Ash sprints in and is going to try to take the site away. Canadian takes down Pengu or Fabian, and Necrox finishes him off. Though Canadian from above, shredded from Shate, traded off by BC. Are we going to see some overtime? Shate eliminating Necrox, still going to leave an advantage in favor of Penta. They have not been able to wrestle control away upstairs from Penta, where you can see all three remaining defenders are. Last time around, they used that to their advantage. They were able to get in and push on site without having any of the defenders be able to come back to site. They have a tall task though. Final 30 seconds of match point and series point. Penta has an opportunity to go to the Invitational, guarantee their spot in the quarterfinals. Roga drops a C4 but it doesn't hit anything just yet. BC eliminates Shate, it's all tied up. C4 goes off, nobody. Pengu on the flank, BC goes down. It's all up to Young who manages to get the diffuser off, but Pengu...